Okay, uh, Bloomberg. Oops. Natalia Drozdiak from Bloomberg. How much have allies contributed to the fund for Ukraine's cap, and how much are you seeking, and why is this so important? Thank you. Well, the allies are now stepping up, so uh, uh, I think uh, we have to wait and see how, how big announcements they will make in total, but I'm quite optimistic that allies now realize the importance of providing support uh, uh, also through uh, the NATO Assistance Fund and also to have long-term uh, commitments. So by the Vilnius Summit, I think we will have a substantial amount of money and also a, a, a commitment to uh, a support for uh, many years, a multi-year uh, program. So I, I think I'll be careful going into the specific announcement. Uh, I think some allies actually will uh, tell you what they have announced uh, in the meeting, but I will leave it to them to to announce the numbers they have uh, uh, announced in the meetings today. Okay. Secretary General Laura Nurmi from Finland, Ilta Lehti. Could you please describe what is the secret of Article 5? Why can the Finns now on trust that if someone attacks on Finland, allied troops will come and help Finland? And then how Finland can provide more concrete security to NATO and make Article 5 even better? Thank you very much. So NATO's core task uh, is uh, to prevent war, is to uh, preserve peace, is to uh, prevent conflict. And uh, the way we do that uh, is to make it absolutely clear that if any ally is attacked, the whole alliance will come uh, and assist and support. Uh, because we regard uh, an attack on one ally as an attack on uh, all allies, uh, uh, based on the principle one for all, all for one. And this has uh, preserved peace, prevented conflict uh, uh, throughout decades uh, for NATO allies. And we will continue to do so by standing together. Because as long as any potential adversary knows that the whole alliance will uh, react, uh, that uh, an attack on one will be regarded as an attack on all, then there will be no military attack on uh, NATO allies. And uh, of course, when Finland now is uh, a full member of uh, NATO, then you are covered uh, by this guarantee, uh, which is a way to preserve peace, uh, to prevent uh, conflict, to prevent uh, armed uh, attacks. Uh, Finland will contribute substantially to this. Uh, because Finland has uh, substantial uh, armed forces, uh, high-end capabilities, including uh, uh, now uh, uh, more than 60 F-35 fighter jets, uh, <coughs> air defense systems, and highly trained, um, uh, 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 well-equipped uh, 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 troops, uh, and also uh, air and naval forces. So, so, so this combined with your second to none um, experience, uh, knowledge, expertise on resilience, uh, strong democratic institutions, and of course also the fact that you have a capable defense industry, all of that uh, contributes to uh, the strength of NATO. And let me add that if you look at the map, we all also realize that just uh, uh, the fact that Finland uh, is located where it is. Um, uh, it's extremely important for the high north, uh, for the Nordic countries, and uh, for the Baltic countries, in addition to NATO as a whole. Okay. Uh, Ukraine, in green. Thank you. Hromatsky uh, Radio, Angela Bubilak. Ukraine, which is currently defend itself and all Europe in a bloody war uh, against a Russian aggression, aggressor, uh, expect that NATO will extend uh, an invitation for Ukraine to join the alliance at the July summit in Vilnius. At what stage is this discussion within the alliance? And I have the second question. Secretary General, do NATO countries plan to increase the supply of ammunition to Ukraine and needs and uh, when? NATO allies and partners are uh, increasing the supply of uh, ammunition uh, to, uh, to Ukraine. We have done that actually for several weeks and months because uh, 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 not least to the US-led uh, uh, contact group uh, for Ukraine, uh, we are in close uh, consultations with uh, Ukraine uh, constantly and uh, uh, Ukraine share with us their needs and it has been obvious for a long time that this has now become a 
war or attrition, uh, which is a battle of logistics, meaning that there is a, a constant need for uh, more ammunition, more supplies, uh, uh, more uh, enablers for the different capabilities that Ukraine has. Uh, and, uh, and therefore, it has been a, a, a big focus on the need to step up uh, not only the supply of ammunition to Ukraine, but also uh, the production. Uh, we have worked with the industry, we are in close contact with the European Union, uh, uh, and we are revising the NATO guidelines for uh, battle decisive ammunition uh, to ensure that uh, allies uh, can replenish their stocks because so far most of the ammunition that has been delivered to Ukraine has come from uh, reducing our own stocks. In the long run that doesn't work. So now we are also ramping up production to replenish our own stocks and to continue to provide ammunition to, uh, to uh, Ukraine. And of course for Ukraine to launch offensive operations to uh, to, to, to continue to retake territory land, to, to liberate more of uh, the occupied land, uh, then of course Ukraine needs a significant amounts of ammunition for their uh, artillery systems, for the battle tanks, for the uh, air defense systems, and uh, for all the different weapon systems that allies have uh, uh, provided. Uh, so this, is, this was uh, an issue discussed today. It's an ongoing a dialogue with uh, with Ukraine. Uh, then <clears throat> NATO's position on membership is uh, changed. Um, Ukraine will become a, um, a member of uh, the alliance. This has been stated again and again at NATO summits. At the same time, we all realize that for to make any meaningful progress on this issue, uh, uh, the first step is to ensure that Ukraine prevails as a sovereign independent nation. And that's the reason why uh, NATO allies and partners are providing unprecedented level of support um, uh, and will continue to continue to do so and why uh, we are also uh, in constant uh, close contact with the Ukrainians and also providing training uh, and allies made those announcements today about uh, uh, additional support to Ukraine uh, to ensure that uh, Ukraine prevails as a sovereign independent state which is a precondition for any uh, meaningful discussion about uh, future membership. Uh, Swedish radio. Gentlemen, then. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. Jan Andersson, Sveriges Radio. First, how many working hours, Secretary General, have you put in these talks between Sweden, Finland, and uh, Turkey so far? And the second question, uh, what's the next step? What kind of a breakthrough are you hoping for in the talks between Sweden and Turkey and Hungary as well? Uh, so Sweden can be a member of NATO in Vilnius. Uh, it seems that you have a sort of a deadlock in these talks right now. Thank you. <coughs> well, first of all, I don't count uh, working hours in that way, uh, but, uh, but, uh, but I welcome the fact that um, uh, uh, many allies and, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and uh, also uh, people in many capitals have been working uh, hard to ensure uh, that we are uh, 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 making progress and also that we deliver on what we all uh, promised in Madrid. Uh, uh, because we have to remember that all allies made the decision uh, in June last year in Madrid to invite Finland and Sweden. And uh, uh, as I have told you before, this is the fastest accession process in NATO's modern history. It's, it's still not a year since uh, uh, Sweden, Sweden and Finland uh, applied. Normally these processes take years. Uh, and we have already uh, Finland as a full member, and uh, 28 allies have ratified uh, uh, Sweden as, uh, as a member. And in the meantime, a lot of has, has happened. Uh, Sweden is much closer uh, and much more integrated into NATO's civilian and military structures now uh, than they were before they applied. And with Finland as a member, uh, that uh, further enhances Sweden's security. Um, then there is no deadlock. There was a deadlock. But we were, able, we were able to lift that, that deadlock because for some uh, weeks or months uh, there were no uh, meetings, no contact uh, in the uh, permanent mechanism. Uh, after a meeting uh, I had with President Erdogan actually some weeks ago, uh, we agreed to restart uh, that process. Uh, we had a meeting here at, uh, at the NATO headquarters with Finland, Sweden and, uh, and uh, Turkey. 
uh, we have agreed to meet again, and there are constant consultations. I spoke with President Erdogan recently, and we are continuing to work at the different levels to make progress also on the accession of, uh, of Sweden. So, uh, Sweden will become a member. We are working hard to ensure that that happens as soon as possible. But it is important to remember that Sweden is not left alone. It's not as if no one cares about Sweden. All allies cares about Sweden. Uh, allies have actually provided uh, bilateral security assurances uh, to Sweden. Allies have increased their presence uh, in the region. Uh, and Sweden is at the table. Sweden is participating more and more in, in, in uh, our military and, uh, and civilian structures. And it is inconceivable that there will be any attack or military threat against Sweden without NATO uh, reacting. And that's even more uh, so with Finland inside. Uh, so uh, uh, Sweden in, is in a much better place now than before they applied, and we will ensure that they also uh, are a, a full member as soon as possible. Thank you very much. I'm afraid that's all we have time for. We'll see you tomorrow. Thank you. See you tomorrow. Thank you so much.